Hello! Today I'd like to go over the legend of the Corn Maiden. The Corn Maiden is a very common, um, I want to say spirit, Kachina figure as part of the lore of pre-contact Native Americans. It, if you look on a map of the distribution of Corn Maiden myths, it is stretches coast to coast because corn was such a major staple of their diet. So I think this started early on and just spread throughout most of the Americas as a common uh, story, lore, goddess, whatever it was. Um, of course, this doesn't come to us untainted because it's been filtered through the lens of missionaries and yada, yada, yada that wrote it down. So I apologize for that, but I'm working with the best I have. I tried to use Native American sources to the best of my ability. Uh, the Corn Maiden, uh, I'm just going to go culture by culture. In the Pueblo Indian culture, corn is to the people the very symbol of life. The corn maiden, grandmother of the sun, in the light brought this gift. The corn maiden brings the power of life to the people. As the corn is given life by the sun, the corn maiden brings the fire of the sun into the human bodies, making them as the creator designed them to be. The great spirit has given many representations of his love and power through nature. The corn maidens are said to have been created by the great spirit in the palm of his right hand. Each maiden brings one seed of corn that is nurtured with love like that given to a child. That this one seed would sustain the entire tribe forever. With love and strength from the tribe, the tiny seeds mature and grow tall and provide crops for the people. The spirit of the corn maidens is forever present with the tribal people. How corn came to the earth. A long time ago, giants lived on the earth, and they were so strong that they were not afraid of anything. When they stopped giving smoke to the gods of the four directions, Nasaru looked down upon them and was angry. I made the giants too strong, he said. I will not keep them. They think that they are like me. I shall destroy them by covering the earth with water, but I will save the ordinary people. Which, I didn't even do this on purpose, but once again, this proves, I want to talk about this in a different video, but flood mythology, lore, stories, is here even on pre-contact, North America. I mean, to me, that's amazing. I, I love flood mythology. I, uh, I commission art for different pieces on that, and I would love to. I want to do that video. Nasaru sent the animals to lead the ordinary people into a cave so large that all the animals and people could live there together. Then he sealed up the cave and flooded the, the earth so that all the giants drowned. And to remind himself that people were under the ground, waiting to be released after the flood waters receded, Nasaru planted corn in the sky. As soon as the corn ripened, he took an ear from the field and turned it into a woman. She was the mother corn. You must go down to earth and bring my people out from under the ground. Lead them to the place where the sun sets, for their home shall be in the west. She went down to the earth and when she heard thunder in the east, she followed the sound into the cave where the people were waiting. But the entrance closed behind her, and she could find no way to lead the people out upon the earth. We must leave this place, this darkness. There is light above the ground. Who will help me take my people out of the earth? The badger came forward and said, Mother Corn, I will help. The mole also stood up and said, I will also help the badger dig through the ground that we may see the light. Then the long-nosed mouse came and said, I will help the other two. 
The badger began to dig upwards. After a while, he fell back exhausted. Mother Corn, I am very tired. Then the mole dug up until he could dig no more, and the log nosed mouse took the mole's place, and when he became tired, the badger began to dig again. The three took turns until at last the long nosed mouse thrust his nose from the ground and could see a little light. The mouse went back and said, Mother Corn, I ran my nose through the earth until I saw light, but the digging has made my nose small and pointed. After this, all the people will know by my nose that it was I who dug through the earth first. The mole went up to the hole and dug all the way through. The sun had come up from the east and it was so bright it blinded the mole. He ran back and said, Mother Corn, I have been blinded by the brightness of the sun. I cannot live upon the earth any more. I must make my home under the earth. From this time, all the moles will be blind, so they cannot see in the daylight, but they can see in the night. They shall stay under the ground in the daytime. The badger then went up and made the hole larger so the people could go through. When he crawled outside, he closed his eyes, but the rays of the sun struck him and blackened his legs and made a streak of black upon his face. He went back down and said, Mother Corn, I've received these black marks upon me, and I wish that I might remain this way, so that people will remember that I w was one of those who helped to get your people out. Very well, she said, let it be as you say. She then led the people out, and the people rejoiced that they were now out upon the open land. While standing there in the sunshine, she said, My people, we will now journey westward toward the place where the sun sets. Before we start, any who wish to remain here, such as badger, mouse, or mole, may do so. Some of the animals decided to return to their burrows in the earth. Others went with her. The journey had begun, and as they traveled, they could see a mountainous country rising up in front of them. They came to a deep canyon. The bluff was too steep for the people to get down, and if they should get down, the opposite side was too steep for them to climb. She asked for help, and a bluish-gray bird flew up, hovering rapidly on its beating wings. It had a large bill, a bushy crest, and a banded breast. The bird was the kingfisher. Mother Corn, I will be the one to point out the way for you. The kingfisher flew to the other side of the canyon, and with its beak, pecked repeatedly into the bank until the earth fell into the chasm. Then the bird flew back and pecked at the other bank until enough earth fell down to form a bridge. The people cried out their thanks. Those who wish to join me may remain here, and we will make our homes in these cliffs. Some stayed, but most journeyed on. After a while, they came to another obstacle, a dark forest. The trees were so tall that they seemed to reach the sun. They grew close together and were covered with thorns, so that Owl came and stood before her and said, I will make a pathway for your people through this forest. Any who wish to remain with me may do so, and we shall live in this forest forever. The Owl then flew up through the timber. As it waved its wings, it moved the trees to one side so that it left a pathway for the people to go through. Mother Corn then led the people through the forest, and they passed onwards. As they journeyed through the country, all at once they came to a big lake. The water was too deep and too wide to cross, and the people talked of turning back. But they could not do this, for Nasaru had ordered Mother Corn to lead them away toward the west. A water bird with a black head and checkered back came and stood in front of Mother Corn and said, I am the loon. I will make a pathway through this water. Let the people stop crying, for I shall help them. She went on and said, Make a pathway for us, and some of the people will remain with you here. He then flew and jumped into the lake moving so swiftly that it parted the waters, and it 
and when it came out on the other side of the lake, it left a pathway. She led the people across to dry land, and some turned back and became loons. The others journeyed on. At last they came to a level place besides the river, and Mother Corn told them to build a village there. Now you shall have my corn to plant, so that you, by eating of it, will grow and multiply. After that, they built a village and planted the corn, and then she returned to the upper world. The people, however, had no rules or laws to go by, no chiefs or medicine men to advise them, and they were spending all their time at playing games. The first game they played was a shinny ball, in which they divided into sides and used curved sticks to knock a ball through the other's goal. Then they played at throwing lances through rings placed upon the ground. As time went on, the players who lost games grew so angry that they began killing those who had beaten them. Nasaru was displeased by, by this behavior, and he and Mother, came, Mother Corn came down to earth. He told them that they must have a chief and some medicine men to show them how to live. While Nasaru taught the people how to choose a chief through tests of bravery and wisdom, Mother Corn taught them songs and ceremonies, and after they had chosen a chief, Nasaru gave the man his own name, and then he taught the medicine men the secrets of magic. He showed them how to make pipes for offering smoke to the gods of the four directions. When all this was done, he went away towards the setting sun to prepare a place for new villages. Mother Corn led the people in his tracks across plains and streams to this country where Nasaru had planted roots and herbs for the medicine men. There they built villages along a river that the white man later called the Republican River in Kansas. On the first day that they came to this country, Mother Corn told them to offer smoke to the gods in the heavens and to all animal gods. While they were doing this, a dog came running into the camp crying, and he accused her of doing wrong by going away and leaving him behind. I came from the sun, and the sun god is so angry because I was left behind that he is sending the whirlwind to scatter the people. Only by giving up my freedom can I do this. No longer can I hunt alone like my brother the wolf, or roam free like the coyote. I shall always be dependent upon the people. But when the whirlwind came spinning and roaring across the land, the dog stood between it and the people. I shall always remain with the people. I shall be a guardian for all their belongings. After the wind died away, Mother Corn said, The gods are jealous. If you forget to give smoke to them, they will grow angry and send storms. In the rich earth besides the river, the people planted her corn, and then she said, I shall turn you into a cedar tree. I shall turn into a cedar tree to remind you that I am Mother Corn who gave you your life. It was I, Mother Corn, who brought you from the east. I must become a cedar tree to be with you. On the right side of the tree will be placed a stone to remind you of Nasaru, who brought order and wisdom to the people. Next morning, a cedar tree, full grown, stood in front of the lodges of the people. Besides it was a large stone, and the people knew that Mother Corn and Nasaru would watch over them through all time, and would keep them together and give them long life. The Coming of Corn This was related, told by the Sock leader named Black Hawk in his 1833 biography. I will relate the manner in which Fort Corn first came. According to tradition handed down by my people, a beautiful woman was seen to descend from the cloud and alight upon the earth. By two of our ancestors who had killed a deer and were sitting by a fire, roasting a part of it to eat. They were astonished at seeing her and concluded that she was hungry and had smelt the meat. They immediately went to her, taking with them a piece of the roasted venison. They presented it to her. She ate it, telling them to return to the spot 
where she was sitting at the end of one year, and they would find a reward for their kindness and generosity. She then ascended to the clouds and heard, but were laughed at by her pe their people. When the period had arrived for them to visit this consecrated ground, where they were to find a reward for their attention to the beautiful woman of the clouds, they went with a large party and found where her right hand had rested on the ground, corn began growing, and where the left hand had rested beans, and immediately where she had been seated, tobacco. Blue Corn Maiden and the Coming of Winter Blue Corn Maiden was the prettiest of the Corn Maiden sisters. The Pueblo people loved her very much and loved the delicious blue corn that she gave them all year long. Not only was she be beautiful, but she also had a kind and gentle spirit. She brought peace and happiness to the people of the Pueblos. One cold winter day, Blue Corn Maiden went out to gather firewood and this was something that she would normally not do. While she was out of her adobe house, she saw Winter Katsina. Winter Katsina is the spirit who brings the winter to the earth. He wore his blue and white mask and blew cold wind with his breath. But when he saw her, he loved her at once. He invited her to come to his house, and she had to go with him. Inside his house, he blocked the windows with ice and the doorway with snow and made cor Blue Corn Maiden his pr prisoner. And although he was very kind to her and loved her very much, she was sad living with him. She wanted to go back to her own house and make the blue corn grow for the people of the Pueblos. Winter Katsina went out one day to do his duties and blow cold wind upon the earth and scatter snow over the mesas and valleys. While he was gone, she pushed the snow away from the doorway and went out of the house to look for the plants and food she loved to find in summer. Under all the ice and snow, she had found four blades of yucca. She took the yucca back to Winter Katsina's house and started a fire. He would not allow her to start a fire when he was in the house. When the fire started, the snow in the doorway fell away and in walked Summer Katsina. Summer Katsina carried in one hand fresh corn and in the other many blades of yucca. He came toward his friend Blue Corn Maiden and just then Winter, winter Katsina stormed through the doorway followed by a roar of winter wind. He carried an icicle in his right hand which he held like a flint knife and a ball of ice in his left hand which he wielded like a hand axe. It looked like Winter Katsina intended to fight with Summer Katsina. As winter blew a blast of cold air, summer blew a warm breeze. When winter raised his icicle knife, summer raised his bundle of yucca leaves and they caught fire and the fire melted the icicle. Winter saw that he needed to make peace with summer, not war. The two sat and talked. They agreed that Blue Corn Maiden would live among the people of Pueblos and give them blue corn for half the year. In the time of summer, the other half of the year, blue corn man would live with winter and the people would have no corn. Blue corn man went away with summer and he was kind to her. She became the sign of springtime, eagerly awaited by the people. Sometimes when spring had come already, winter will blow cold wind suddenly or scatter snow when it is not the snow time. He does this just to show how displeased he is to have to give up Blue Corn Maiden for half the year. The Corn Maidens, a Zuni legend. After long ages of wandering, the precious seed things rested over the middle at Zuni. And men turned their hearts to the cherishing of their corn and the corn maidens instead of warring with strange men. But there was a complaint by the people of the customs that followed. Some said the music was not that of the olden time. Far better was that which of knights 
they often heard as they wandered up and down the river trail. Wonderful music as of liquor, liquid voices in caverns or the echo of women's laughter in water vases. And the music was timed with the teep toned drum from the Mountain of Thunder. Others thought the music was that of the ghosts of ancient men, but it was far more beautiful than the music when danced by the corn maidens. Others said light clouds rolled upwards from the grotto and thunder mountain, like to the mists that leave behind the dew. But lo, even as they faded, the bright garments of the rainbow women may be seen fluttering. And the broidery and paintings of these dancers of the mist were more beautiful than the costumes of the corn maidens. Then the priests of the people said, It may well be Payatuma, the liquid voice his flute and the flutes of his players. Now when the time of ripening corn was near, the fathers ordered preparation for the dance of the corn maidens. They sent the two master priests of the bow to the grotto at Thunder Mountains saying, If you behold Payatuma and his maidens, perhaps they will give us the help of their customs. Then up the river trail, the priests heard the sound of a drum and the strains of a song. It was Payatuma and his seven maidens, the maidens of the House of Stars, sisters of the Corn Maidens. The god of dawn and music lifted his flute and took his place in the line of dancers. The drum sounded until the cavern shook as with thunder. The flute sang and sighed as the wind in a wooden cannon, while still the storm is distant. White mist floated up from the wands of the maidens, upon which fluttered the butterflies of Summerland about the dress of the rainbows in the strange blue light of the night. Then Payatuma, smiling, said, Go the way before, telling the fathers of our custom, and straightway we will follow. Soon the sound of music was heard coming up from the river, and soon the flute people and singers and maidens of the flute dance. Up rose the fathers and the, all the watching people, greeting the god of dawn with outstretched hand and offering a prayer meal. Then the singers took their places and sounded their drums, flutes, and songs of clear waters, while the maidens of the dew danced their flute dance. Greatly marveled the people, when from the wands they bore forth came white clouds and fine cool mist descended. Now when the dance was ended and the dew maidens had retired, out came the beautiful mothers of corn. And when the players of the flute saw them, they were enamored of their beauty and gazed upon them so intently that the maidens let fall their hair and cast down their eyes. And jealousy and bolder grew the mortal use and in the morning dawn in rivalry, the dancers sought all too freely the presence of the corn maidens, no longer holding them so precious as in the olden time. And the matrons, intent on the new dance, heeded naught else. But behold, the mist great increased greatly, surrounding dancers and watchers alike, until within them the maidens of corn, all in white garments, became invisible. Then sadly and noiselessly they stole in amongst the people and laid their corn wands down amongst the trays and laid their white broidered garments thereupon as mothers lay soft kitling over their babes. Then even as the mist became they, and with the mist drifting, fled away to the far south summer land. Why does it keep doing that? Long, long ago in a beautiful part of this country, there lived an Indian with his wife and children. He was poor and found it hard to pr provide food enough for his family. But though needy, he was kind and contented and always gave thanks to the great spirit for everything that he received. His eldest son, Wons, was likewise kind and gentle 
and thankful of heart, and he longed greatly to do something for his people. The time came that he reached the age that every boy fasts so that he may see in a vision the spirit that is to be his guide through life. His father built him a little lodge apart so that he might see in a vision the spirit that is to be his guide through life. He built a lodge so that the boy might rest there undisturbed during his days of fasting. Then he withdrew to begin the solemn rite. On the first day, he walked alone in the woods, looking at the flowers and plants and filling his mind with the beautiful images of growing things so that he might see them in his night dreams. He saw how the flowers and herbs and berries grew, and he knew that some were good for food and that others healed wounds and cured sickness. And his art was filled with even a greater longing to do something for his family and tribe. Truly, he thought, the Great Spirit made all things. Then the whole family feasted on the ears of corn and thanked the Great Spirit who gave it. Corn came into the world. This has been your host, Luke. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe for more. I hope you have a great night. Thanks for watching.